As a value investor, one of the most important skills that you can learn is how to perform sensitivity analysis in Excel. The reason being that it allows you to perform different things such as analyze the intrinsic value of a stock given different assumptions that you enter in your financial analysis model. With this, you can be more confident in your analysis and ultimately make better stock investment decisions. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can perform sensitivity analysis in Excel. Okay, so at the end of the video, your sensitivity analysis in Excel will look like this. But first, let's go step by step through the entire process. Okay, so the first step to perform your sensitivity analysis in Excel is to build a financial model. So in this case, this is the financial model that we're going to be utilizing for this video. As you can imagine, this is a very simple uh, financial analysis model. In reality, you can make it as complicated as you like. And this is probably not what you would do it, but this is just to give you an example in simple terms of how the sensitivity analysis works. So to start off, the model is very simple. All you have to do is enter, uh, in this case, the company ticker. Here we have uh, the projections. What we're gonna be projecting in this case is 2022, 2023, and all these different years. And our main objective here is to forecast the EPS. So as you can see, uh, this is based on the current EPS of the company. And then from here on, what happens is that it's multiplied by the implied EPS growth that we enter here as an assumption. From there, this is projected. And then to be able to get uh, the terminal value, this is very simple. You take the final EPS and you multiply that times the PE multiple that you want to analyze. Altogether, that gives you the terminal value. And the terminal value in this case is what we're gonna be doing the sensitivity analysis on for these two different tables that you can see right here. Now, in order to make our sensitivity analysis in Excel successful, what we need to do is to look at historical data as well as your own research that you do on the particular company. So one of the things that we're going to do here is we're going to use the Y's function from Y Sheets to enter the symbol Apple in this case, the company that we're analyzing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the historical PE ratio. This will give us a pretty good idea of what are the different ranges that the PE ratio has fluctuated over time. So from here, we could more easily select a maximum PE ratio that we could expect in our sensitivity analysis and a minimum PE ratio that we could expect. As you can see from the historical data, uh, the lowest the PE ratio got was about 18 and the highest it ever got was 34.77. So as you can see, the range seems to be somewhere between 15 and 35. We can also do the same for the EPS. So in that case, all you have to do is change the PE ratio now to the EPS. And then from here, you can also apply um, any type of calculation like the percentage change. So here, what we're gonna do is this. So you enter the percentage change formula, which is the latest value minus the previous value. And all of this divided by the previous value. So as you can see, in this case, the change was about 30%. And if we drag this formula across, we're gonna get it uh, for all these years. In this case, it was actually negative. And then here, we can see that it went from 11% and then 71%. So that's a massive jump. We can also do the average growth as well. So average growth, and that would be equal to, again, the percentage change formula. So in this case, we'll take the latest value minus the latest value. So in this case, all the way to 2017 divided by this value. And then what we're going to do is divide these numbers by five because we're analyzing by five years. So this will give us the average uh, for the five year period. So it's a pretty high number. What I would recommend is to keep this number in mind, but also when we do the analysis, we're gonna look at different numbers that may be more reasonable than 28%. Now that we have our financial analysis model in place, we can go ahead and perform the sensitivity analysis in Excel for one variable first. 
So the one variable that we're going to be focusing first is the PE ratio. And then we're going to hold the EPS yearly growth constant at 5%. So in order to perform this analysis, what we have to do is quite simple. We get rid of these values. And then here, what you need to do is enter and reference the cell that you want to perform the sensitivity analysis on. So in this case, that is the terminal value. And you can see that I'm referencing that cell. You enter that and then here you enter the different variables that you want to analyze. So here we have the 5%. This comes from the analysis of the EPS growth that we did earlier. And then the P ratio, the same thing. What I recommend is that you keep the increments that you want to analyze this particular variable. So in this case, the PE ratio constant. So as you can see, it is in increments of five. So it goes from 15 to 20 to 25, 30. We could also include 35 if we really wanted to, but to keep things simple, we'll keep it from 15 to 30. Now, once you have your table set up in this way, what you're gonna do is quite simple. You're gonna highlight the cells that you want to perform the sensitivity analysis on. And this also includes the terminal value cell or whatever value you want to perform the sensitivity analysis. Then head to the data tab right here, what if analysis, and then you're gonna enter data table. And this is where it gets interesting. So you're going to be asked, what is the row input cell and the column input cell? So if you remember, columns are the letters in Excel. So this will be column uh, G, column H, column I, etc. And then rows are the numbers. So this would be row three, row four, etc. So in this case, based on how you set up your table and you could set it up in any way you want, you could have the EPS here and the PE ratio here. In this case, with the way that we have it set up, we can see that the column in this case is going to be the PE ratio. So you can see this right here. And then the EPS, that's going to be the row. So what it asks you is what is the row? In this case, we're going to select the EPS. And for the column, it's going to be the PE multiple. Once you click OK, what's going to happen is that Excel is going to calculate the terminal value for the different PE values that we have here. So if I click OK, you will see how automatically the calculation is performed for us. Something that you can do, which is quite helpful, is again, apply the percentage change growth formula. So in this case, you're going to do this minus this. And all of this divided by the previous value. And what this is going to allow you to do is to get a sense of how sensitive is the terminal value to the different variables that you're analyzing. So in this case, that is the PE. So if we do this, we see that we increased in this case, the PE from 20 to 25. And we went from a growth of 33% to 25% and then to 20%. So this indicates that there's diminishing returns on the PE ratio, even though you're increasing the PE ratio in equal increments. Now that we have this done, we're going to go ahead and perform the sensitivity analysis in Excel for the two variable tables. So in this case, we're looking at the EPS yearly growth and the PE ratio, and we're going to fill all of these values. Well, the way this works is exactly the same. Make sure you have your terminal value or whatever uh, variable you're analyzing here referenced, and then select the table, head to data, what if analysis, data table. And in this case, the same structure is going to apply. So the P ratio is definitely the column, column B. And then row 12, in this case, is the EPS growth. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure to select that, the column PE. And then in this case, the row is the EPS growth. And as you can see, Excel is going to automatically calculate these values for you. As you can see in this case, based on the results from the sensitivity analysis, and this is where you really get the value of doing performing the analysis in this way, is that you realize that the most important assumption in this case is the PE ratio. Because as you can see, a small difference in the PE ratio makes a huge difference in the terminal value. Whereas if you look at the EPS yearly growth, it barely makes any difference. 
So if you're going to perform an analysis model, you really want to make sure that you have a solid P ratio, otherwise it's gonna throw off your entire terminal value calculation. Now you know how to perform sensitivity analysis in Excel, as well as how to automate part of this process. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell on so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this, that's gonna allow you to take your investing game to the next level. I'll see you in the next one.